Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Bonnie Grimaldi. I'm so glad to see you all here this morning. And we welcome Miriam Stein as our guest organist. Uh, the youth will have donut holes and cookies in the narthex before and after each service on Sunday, February 11th. And donations will support their mission trip to New Orleans this summer. Shrove Tuesday, pancake dinner, will be Tuesday, February 13th, from 4.30 to 6.30. And we pray for the family of Bill Loveday, who passed away this week. And we continue to pray for the families and the friends of Tuskegee Valley school system suffering tragic losses. And we continue to pray for Israel, Palestine, and Ukraine, that the killing of innocent people will end, that the wars will end, and that there will be justice, healing, and peace. As we go to our prelude, let us turn our hearts and minds toward worship. Thank you so much. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another, 
and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
you may be seated for our lessons. Good morning. Our readings for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Our first reading is Deuteronomy 18th chapter, verses 15 through 20. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore, or even again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up from them a prophet like you among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet and who shall speak to them of everything I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophets shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in my name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded that the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. The responsive psalm this morning is 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All you precepts are sure. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever holy and awesome in your name. Our second reading is found in 1 Corinthians 8th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrifice to our idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as this is to eating of foods offered to idols, we, though, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven and, or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is only one God, the Father, from whom all things and for all who exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food that they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers from whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family, and wound the conscience where, they are, where it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, I will never eat meat, 
so that I may never cause one of them to fail. The Lord, word of the Lord. The Gospel according to the first chapter of Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated for our children's sermon. Would the children like to come forward with me? Yes, you may come today. <laughs> Good morning, children. Is your room ever messy at home? Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever uh, then clean it? <laughs> no? <laughs> well, if you do clean it, what kinds of things do you have in your room that need cleaned? Yes. Water bottles. Yeah. Lots of any clothes. Okay. Uh, is this, um, uh, I guess I would say, I have messes at home too. And I opened a junk drawer and I kind of put some stuff in this bag from my junk drawer. And I don't know if you can all see it, but if I pour it out. This is stock. This is a mess. This is. Uh, these are ear, ear plugs or earbuds that only have one ear that work. Uh, here's a, I, a glasses bow, and yeah, I broke my glasses. And here is a flashlight that needs batteries. It's not working. Here is a broken pen. I always have broken pens. I don't, how do they unscrew themselves? I don't understand that. But they're always, you know, well, I go to get a pen and that's what they look like. And then I have just like an old Kleenex that's just sitting in there all kind of torn up. So this sanctuary, is it usually messy or clean? Clean? It's pretty much clean most of the time. Um, I think that this mess sitting here really sticks out like a sore thumb in this beautiful, clean. Could you help me clean it up? I appreciate it. Thank you. That really helps. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's so much better. Do you know that we have messes in our rooms, but we also have messes inside of us? Um, when we don't feel okay, you know, when we're upset, when, you know, when we are messed up, <laughs> messed up inside. Um, and some people think that they can clean that up on their own. They can 
clean up their inside when they're, like when they're upset and in pain and hurting, that they can just do that all by themselves. Or they think that they can't go to church until they clean themselves up on the inside. Or maybe they come to church but just hide it and, and like everything's okay. And, but they have this inside that is really messed up, okay? And in our scripture lesson today, we have someone that is in Jesus' faith community that um, he spills out all his inside messes right out in the middle of the worship service. And that was called in scripture, unclean spirit. He called, they called it an unclean spirit. And what did Jesus do? Do you remember how Jesus responded when that person un spilled out his uh, inside mess? How did he respond? He didn't get mad, did he? No. He didn't get upset. He just helped that person at that point in time right away, right? Just helped them get better. Well, um, in our sanctuary, uh, sometimes it's uh, nice and clean and we don't want to um, come with our messed up insides, but we, we can do that. We are to come even though we have the messed up insides. We come to church and we can help each other with that with whatever is bothering us, right? And that's what we're to do. Just kind of like what you just did by helping me pick up and clean up that mess that I made right there on that step. And, but we do that for the insides of us. We make each other feel better. So not only do we come to church when we are messed up inside, we also are to ask and let other people know about our methods so that with God's help that we can help each other get better. Okay? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to show us how to receive and, and share your love. that heals people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you. I guess there is Children's Church if you're going. Oh, you can take a snack. And if anybody wants to bring one to DJ, they can do that to us. Thank you. Yeah. Please pray with me. Dear God, help us to listen to the true image and voice of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who is this man who appears in the synagogue today with an unclean spirit? He's very loud. He's interrupting the service. He attracts our attention in the same way that a homeless man who is unwashed and talking loudly to himself would if he were to show up here at Grace. I imagine that the part of today's gospel that most of us find fascinating is the story of the man with an unclean spirit. He ironically has no such effect on the synagogue people. Jesus is the center of their attention. His presence and teaching astound them. They have never heard anything like this before. He possesses authority. 
His words have meaning. They have an impact. Even the man with the unclean spirit is shocked and fascinated by Jesus. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? In the synagogue, Jesus is teaching. His authority permeates not just the place, but each person within. And this man with an unclean spirit appears almost immediately. The presence of the man with an unclean spirit is drawn out by Jesus. The man with a clean spirit. People are affected like that by Jesus. The truth about the lives of his listeners is revealed by his authority and his teaching. The lives of those in the synagogue look like this one with the unclean spirit. His uncleanness has nothing to do with bad behavior, immorality, personal hygiene, or Judaism. Rather, his presence in their synagogue depicts their fragmented lives, multiple voices within them, and the sickness of their soul. They recognize themselves in him and are shocked by the contrast of the one with a clean spirit. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? He sees the gap between his life and Jesus. His words reveal his isolation, but it's not only about him. He speaks for everyone present in the synagogue that day, not just for himself. He stands for everyone who has ever experienced life's brokenness. He is the voice of everyone who feels disconnected from God, other people, or themselves. He signifies the human condition. I think the unspoken desire and hope that Jesus would reply, everything. I've everything to do with you is what's behind this question. Those are the words that can start the process of rebuilding his life. We're not that different. We all long for that response because we are aware of the brokenness and separation in our own lives. We've led isolated lives. We've been stuck in grief. We've carried the load of guilt. The various personas we adopt often reveal the truth of those circumstances. All of us project different images or personas of how we want to be perceived by others and ourselves at some level. Maybe it's saying something as basic and seemingly silly as, I can't go to the grocery store looking like this. My hair is a mess and I have no makeup on. Or when in reality, we are barely hanging on and don't know how we're going to make it through the rest of the day. But we smile and say, yes, everything's fine. We don't want the messy condition of our lives to be seen. We hide the realities of our lives and who we are behind our personas like masks. The sad thing is that they also hide who we may become. It seems that the various voices that live inside of us give rise to those masks. They are the voices of grief, fear, anger, guilt, and condemnation. They are the voices that compel us to constantly compare and compete with one another. They are the voices that demand perfection, asking, what have you done for me today? 
The voices are never satisfied. We can never do or be enough. Each of those voices is false. The voice of the unclean spirit that separates us from who we really are, from everything we love, and from everyone who loves us. Recently, someone asked me, why do I care so much about what other people think and say about me? The gospel for today crossed my mind. I thought about separation, an unclean spirit, false voices, and a desire for acceptance and approval. Her question contains all of this. She might as well have asked. What have you to do with me, Jesus of Nazareth? She could be the person in today's gospel. However, so so could you and I, when we take off our mask. We are all so funny. Deep down, we desire authenticity and intimacy. But the last thing we want is to be discovered to have our true selves exposed to someone. So we put on a nice front in the hopes that it will win us acceptance, love, and approval. We create ourselves in the image and likeness of the unclean spirit while we say and do the right things, behave and dress the right way, and even believe the right way. Ironically, the very things that we think these personas and fronts will get us, which are intimacy, love, acceptance, healing, forgiveness, and authenticity, are the very things they prevent us from having. There's no chance for life to thrive and be abundant in the personas. We continue to cling to those false voices that ask collectively, have you come to destroy us? That is precisely what Jesus came for. He came to destroy. He came to silence our false voices. He came to cast out all our personas, and to transform us into people with a clean spirit. He has everything to do with us. He presents himself to us as a mirror image of who we could become. There's no part of our life about which he isn't concerned. He calls us to embrace our true self that is created in God's image and likeness. He calls us to return to the wholeness and beauty of our original creation. The gospel of today is not so much about casting out as it is about calling forth. They are both sides of the same coin. In Reverend Ian McDonald's blog, He writes that he stopped into a local restaurant to say a quick hello to some friends who were in there having breakfast. While he had to decline their offer to join them at the table, he did, however, reciprocate by inviting them to join him at God's table on Sunday. This not not only garnered some laughter but a few uncomfortable stares, too. As he was leaving, a young man in his early 20s was watching him with an inquisitive look on his face. Embracing the spirit of hospitality, Ian invited him to church as well. But like his friends at the other, friends at the other table, he met his invitation with a half-hearted smile. While walking to his car, Ian heard a voice call out to him. Thinking it was the young man, he stopped and turned around, only to discover it was someone much bigger 
and a lot less friendlier. This guy was a great big ape of a man with scars and tattoos all over his body. The man had no problem exercising his physical presence to intimidate him. Ian used to wear a clerical collar to let people know that he is a non-threatening kind of guy, but in this case, it did just the opposite. It only seemed to fuel this man's rage. By the look in his eyes and the venom spewing from his mouth, Ian wouldn't be too far off saying this guy was possessed with an unclean spirit, one that clearly didn't like him. Now, he's been confronted before, but this particular time threw him. And it did so because the guy kept asking, who do you think you are, holy man? Who said you could invite my kid to church? In his lame attempt, Ian answered him, I was just doing what God has called me to do, which is to love everyone just as God has always loved me. This clearly was not the answer he wanted. Just as Ian thought he was doomed, the man's anger morphs into accusations. After a few colorful words, the man blurted, you're a liar because I'm unlovable. His anger and rage towards Ian seemed to turn on himself. And Ian realized this victimizer was a victim to his own unclean spirit. Ian didn't know what possessed this guy to confess that to him. But Ian quickly assured him that God loved him no matter what. Ian told him there was nothing he could do to stop God from pursuing him and loving him, not even hurting Ian. And that's when it happened. All the rage and anger that had been building up inside of the man just sort of stopped. It was like that unclean spirit just packed and left them, standing there in a public parking lot. The true image and the true voice are ever present. So the man with an unclean spirit can cry, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. He speaks from a profound level of knowing. At its core, his recognition of Jesus is a recognition of his own holiness and self. For the voices that deny that, leaving us crying, what have you to do with us, Jesus says. Shh, quiet. That's not who you are. You're mine, and I've everything to do with you. You too will be astounded at what your life can become when you listen to that voice. Amen.
please stand as you are able as we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church in love. May all church leaders and teachers honor your instructions and model your inclusive ways. Lord, in your mercy, Renewing God, we pray for all creation. The waterways flow of clean and natural spaces are protected and our planet is healed. Let us commit to the thoughtful care of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, justice seeking God, we pray for those in government and community leadership that they lead with honor and mindfulness. May they remember their covenants and be upright in their ways. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need, especially those who have known rejection, any who struggle with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care, and any who suffer. For all those that we're on our prayer list, for those that are not not only to you, Lord, in your mercy. Still speaking, God, we pray for our congregation, for its artists and musicians, for its educators and caregivers, that all gifts are used to care for those in need and to live out your example of accomplishment, gospel witness, and love. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Eternal God, we remember all who have been teachers, mentors, companions in the church and in our lives, and especially Thomas Aquinas, who we commemorate today. We trust that all who have died rest in your loving care. Lord, in your mercy. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace in any way that you're comfortable. Peace. You may be seated.
Thank you so much. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
تفاریب خواہش کے ہوں پر ہوئی 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 The body of Christ given for you. 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 Jesus loves you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. 
Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. May our offerings reach out to bring hope and grace to our near and distant neighbors whom you know and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, you are God's beloved. 